We're going to start a new siman, Bezalat Hashem. We're going to start a new siman regarding eating meat after you eat dairy. Until now we were speaking about eating dairy after you eat meat. Now we're going to speak about eating meat right after you eat dairy. He says, He says, yeah, it says a person's allowed a person's allowed to eat meikaradin meat right after eating cheese, even if it's givina tsuva, givina melucha, givina mishuleshet, givina tsafatit. After you wipe your mouth with bread and you rinse your mouth with liquid. You check your hands to make sure none of the cheese got stuck to your hands. And if it's at night when you can't really look at your hands so well, you wash them or you wipe them very well. This is somebody who ate butter. That butter sticks to your palate and to your teeth. You should have to eat some kind of food in between also. So Meikaradin, he says, really you're allowed to eat right away as long as you would clean out your mouth. No, you don't have to wait three hours. You can eat right away. He says, what does it mean, kinua chape, when we say to clean your mouth? It means that a person should chew anything, like bread, fruits, anything that you could, anything that's not sticky, like le- like uh, greens or dates, you're allowed to use that to clean your mouth out. Now, he says, the person doesn't have to, you know, they ask, what should I do first? Should I drink first or should I eat first? What comes first, kinua or adacha? He says, whichever one you want, you could do. Just the best thing that people do is first they eat and they drink so that the, water, the liquid will take out anything that's left over. But you can do either way you want. Some say that quinoa chape only works if you swallow it. But if you chew and spit it out, it's no good. Ula Meikadin, he says it's enough to swallow it. It's enough to just swallow it and that would be good enough. Ach Bulavach, he says nobody should chew and spit it out because it's already wasting food. But the Meikadin, the person should put it in his mouth and swallow it. That's also called quinoa. Now he says you could use for adakha when you rinse out your mouth, you could use any liquid. It doesn't have to be water. It could be any type of liquid. And by liquid, you don't have to swallow it. You can even spit it out. You rinse out your mouth, you spit it out. He says don't use wine because wine is it's a soup to waste wine. So don't use wine. It's enough to rinse your mouth out once. Once you rinse out your mouth, you're good to go. He says, very interesting. You could do kinuach and adakha in one shot. What does that mean? You soak bread in water and you eat that bread. Now he says, you ate soaked bread, you got both. Both you got the water, liquid part and you got the bread part. However, he says, better obviously to do each step on its own. Somebody who has cavities or he has teeth that, are, that have gaps, they're, uh, they're, a little, they're a little shifted. The best thing for him obviously is to brush his teeth beforehand because again, he has cavities, so something probably stuck in his teeth. After six hours, we say just like me, it's probably braces, somebody who has braces, somebody who has dentures. Just take it off now, we can't do that, we said. Now he says, when you wash your hands, when we, we're called maim and tzayim, right? We have it on Shabbat most commonly when we eat fish yeah, to meat, right? Maim and tzayim, he says, you could do it inside a vessel, you could do it without a vessel, you could just rinse it into the sink. You don't need to do it like we wash hands with bread, you could use straight to sink water. You could even use lukewarm water. He says, We say by maim and chavonim, you can use other waters. But here he says, you should not use other waters, because again, you're trying to Clean your hand. Ulam, he says, Bishadat Chak, if you're on the road, you have no water, you can use other liquids again. He says that wiping your hands on the wall would not be good enough by this because the point is to clean your hands from any residue. And his Sagdat, he writes also his Posel, meaning if a person washes hands in between fish and meat and he forgot about it, he would have to wash his hands again. God the will continue in the Alachot. He says here, actually, one more thing. He says, somebody who drank milk. Drink milk, right? Now you want to have meat afterwards? He says, you don't have to wash your hands. All you got to do, he says, is rinse out your mouth. You don't need to eat bread either. So you basically had coffee. And right after your coffee, you want to have meat. All you have to do is rinse out your mouth. That's it. You don't have to eat anything. You don't have to wash your hands. You didn't touch anything. You just drink coffee. All you got to do is rinse out your mouth with water once, spit it out, and you could have meat right away. Why is that? Because you didn't... Uh, what, what, what is it? Do you have left over in your teeth? Are you asking why I don't have to wait? We don't wait by it between, because dairy, is, the taste doesn't linger. The taste disappears right away, and also there's nothing in your teeth. You drink. Yeah, do you, but the, you know, milk digests a while in the stomach. That's fine, but we don't care about what's in the stomach. We care about the, the, the taste. They don't care about what's in the stomach. Really? I didn't remember you. 
You don't care about what's in the stomach. Some people held by meat. Some people held that we don't follow that you could eat meat. You could eat meat right away. Some people say you could eat dairy after meat. We just don't do that. And then, and then gargle your mouth, wash it. So that we, so that we said doesn't work because the the shunim say by meat the taste lingers longer in a person's mouth. Yeah, but you're waiting six hours, right? That's how long they say it takes it takes to the taste to get removed. Some people didn't hold that, by the way. It's an argument. Some people held immediately. Some people held one hour. Some people held three. We have we do six because. The Gemara also doesn't tell us the reason why. It just says that the rabbis used to wait from meal to meal. That's all it says. It doesn't say why they used to wait from meal so to meal. Just, so we translate... They're putting, they're putting fences. We translate... Exactly. We translate meal to meal as six hours. They're putting fences just in case. That the whole thing is a fence. Correct. The whole thing is a fence. The Torah allows you to eat... Uh, as long as you don't eat them hot together, you can eat them cold one after another. Right. Or even hot one after another, as long as they're not boiling. But the Rabbanan came and said you have to wait six hours. Because okay. I've seen people go crazy over milk and meat. You know, this shit, this. You're the supposed to. Crazy. I mean, not, not I mean, crazy like, in no, a sense, no, but. No, no. I mean, like. Okay, every, every, you have to follow the halachot for everything.